Welcome to the talkies. We are in wow. a padded room for our own safety. <laughs> yeah, for our own sanity. Yeah. Sanity and safety. Yeah, we were hurting ourselves. So um, we've been confined. It's a weird joke. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You think mental illness is funny? So do I. Uh, Joker. Okay. More weird right? jokes. <laughs> Joker, right? <laughs> We're here to talk about best Star picture. Wars. Speaking of Best Picture nominee. Uh, 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 we just saw a Best Picture nominee called 1917. Had very little to do with the year 1917. Like, I, I didn't see it really much. It didn't even take place in 1917. Yeah. Is it that was, so? Yeah, yeah, it was actually in 1917. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this April was 6, directed right. by April. Sam Mendes. Yep. Uh, who also directed Sky, Skyfall. Uh, yes, he did. <laughs> well known for Skyfall. Skyfall and Spectre. And Spectre, unfortunately. Well. American Beauty. Wait, did American he do Skyfall? Beauty. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Okay. American Beauty. American Beauty. Good movie. Kevin Spacey. Ke- Kev Space. Kev Spacey was in this movie, which was surprising. That is, that's bold. Yeah. Yeah. Bold oh, choice. That was him. Yeah. He Weird played, role. He plays himself. It's that's really strange. That's a bold, <laughs> creative choice. <laughs> I didn't know he was alive in 1917. Was he the, the guy in the trenches? <laughs> What's happening? He was the guy in the trenches, yeah. Am, oh, I, am I crazy? No. He was in the movie. He, no, he was. No, a, he, he was not in the movie. Why are you doing this to me? Because you. Did I thought you me. were in on the joke. Yeah, I thought you were in. No, it's not a joke. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch was in this movie. Yeah, he yeah was. I wasn't expecting he was, that. Yeah. He was in the. Trailer. I saw him in the trailer. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. He looks a little different. Anyway, got a hat on. Let's talk about this movie. <laughs> Let's actually I mean, talk about helmet. the movie. The movie itself. <laughs> yes. Okay. What Kevin Spacey's well, performance was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I have to agree. What did you think of the movie? What did I think of the movie? What did you think of the oh, movie? Oh, hot takes. Hot take? What's Here's hot my take? hot take. I liked this movie. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> is, that like, is it really hot? <laughs> that, that's my reaction to his hot take. To my hot take. <laughs> I liked it. Um, my mind wasn't blown. I was trying to get my mind blown. To get close? He was trying to get blown. <laughs> I yeah. didn't even really get that close. Yeah. Like, it just wasn't getting blown, you know? It just wasn't getting it just blown. Wasn't getting, my mind was not being blown at all. Uh, but <laughs> I liked it. Cinematography is gorgeous because it's Roger Deakins. It's Roger just, Deakins. The it's Deke. Always the Deke. Deke. It's always gorgeous. Always good with the Deke. I have uh, I have some critiques. Uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. Which I guess, I don't know if I can. Is that a hot take? Can you critique that, in your hot not? take? You can critique in your hot take. What do we okay. do in hot Is hot take just liked it or not? It's just like. Just quick. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Go. you've taken too All much right, time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go. I liked it. <laughs> wow. That was a very hot take. That was pretty hot. Pretty hot. Yeah. D. I loved it. Oh, he went to love. I went to love. Yeah. Wow, are you sure you're not taking this too fast? Nope. Nope. You like war S- movies. Sat down, thought about it, love it. Because he really likes Dunkirk too. Oh, yeah. Right. I like war movies. Right. And I really liked uh, Overlord, which was also based on the- That's not a war movie. No, that's based on the- uh, Yeah, Jake, we're shooting the talkies right now. The war. Oh, 1917. It's really good. You should see it. Yeah. Oh, so but I got so I gotta go. Okay. Yeah, there's people watching, you know. Yeah, I love this movie. I loved it too. <laughs> you just said you liked it. What's the difference? Well, I loved it. Well, I like you. And <laughs> and Taylor didn't love it. I didn't love it. No, no. your mind wasn't blown. It wasn't blown. That's different. My you mind could was, still love it. My mind wasn't. No, blown, I didn't love, I love it. it. I loved it. Mind wasn't blown. Yeah, same yeah. here. Liked it. Did not love it. Mind not blown. <laughs> yeah, but do you have capacity to love? No. Not <laughs> so really. That's what I thought. I like, loved Uncut Gems. Like, you can't blame the movie. Did you, did you hear yeah. that? What he just said? Oh, you, you do. You can love. Yeah. You are capable of love. So he believe liked Uncut Gems better than this movie. I can't believe that. Yeah. A lot more, too, actually. I have like a factor. seen Uncut Gems. Yeah. So. Anywho, Let's I'm glad it. we all liked the movie. But let's get into it. Okay, now now we can argue. No, first we'll talk about our sitting seating situation. Oh, geez. oh yeah, that was good. That was cl- that was classic. <laughs> that was fun. That was so fun. Uh, so you know, they some foolish person decided to put the numbers for the seats on one of the armrests, which 
always confuses me. Why don't they put it on the chair? On the chair itself. Yeah. Put yeah. it on the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, so, is this seat? There's always like what? Seat 11. 12, 11, 11. I don't know. And of course, the movie's already starting. You have to go to the very end of the row. And it's all loud because trailers are playing, stuff. right? And people are like, "You're in my seat." And we're like, "This? No, we're not." And they're like, "Yes, you are." So turns out we were, or I was, in someone else's seat. But our entire row was in the wrong seat. Yeah, every yeah. person in the row was in the wrong seat. <laughs> yeah, so, so because everyone, some old every, couple <laughs> right. decided not to sit decided in their not to sit seat. In that seat. Yeah, so the, so boomers. Everyone, we had to move thirteen people to the left. Yeah. <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> Wrecked. Wrecked. Wrecked indeed. Wrecked. So that's the seat story. Yeah. So that was fun. Anyway, made us uncomfortable. Can we move on? Okay. So here's what I don't like about the movie. That was directed by Sam Mendes. Um. The one take thing, one shot thing, one shot thing. Oh right, yeah. this movie was shot oh, it was as all, if it was one shot. That's the whole gimmick. Um, feels like gimmick. Facts, yeah. facts. Feels like gimmick, and the whole thing I didn't agree. didn't feel real. To so me. okay, so this, this kind of happened with Dunkirk also, right? Mm-hmm. The, it was something that that you guys said about Dunkirk was. Uh, you didn't like the idea that they were doing three parallel stories, right? I don't remember disliking that. I, I remember you guys. I was told, critiquing you that. Guys, yeah, you guys. It came to light. I had some that, that was about, a gimmick, right? Yeah, Dunkirk. sure. So yeah. sometimes I feel like th- that uh, the execution of a gimmick gets in the way of perhaps choosing a better way to tell the story. So that was the first time that I even realized that that was a gimmick. Like I, I was thinking, well, Are yeah, you, it was just a movie. You though. have gimmick blindness. <laughs> well, I would say that. On the gimmick scale, yeah, uh, 1917 is way more gimmicky than Dunkirk. So agreed. Yeah. So the one shot thing is not like it's it's happening. You can't you can't not see it. But I felt like it was completely complementary to the movie. It was nice. I liked it quite a bit. So for me, um, I, I felt like there were like four or five scenes that were heightened by the follow cam feel yeah right like really cool uh especially like when he's <coughs> running through the ruins of that place mm-hmm. chase like moments especially were the very chases very were cool. crazy yeah going down into the underground bunker bit was i think it, it definitely helped but to string everything together there were moments where you felt the leap they had to make to keep it going and that's where it felt like Okay, now they're, they're trying. I can feel them trying well, what do you mean? to make the one-shot gimmick work, and I don't want to feel them trying. I like want to feel like I'm watching the movie. Like it didn't but, come naturally. Well, I mean, like how it would. That's what I mean. Uh, so some of the some of the transitions that they did yeah. were just felt like, okay, we have to find a way to obscure the vision right. so that we can hide a cut. Yeah. As opposed to something that was actually motivated by what was going on. You felt like the shot motivated a cut? Well, because they needed a place to cut. So they had to they had to orchestrate, you know, they had to go behind a rock right. to block the camera for a second so they could stitch a cut stitch in, a cut in yeah. there, you know. So the, so the camera movement itself the ca- fa- it was not motivated the by the story. So yeah. there was there was one time that that I felt that happened and that was when uh just before they went into the giant uh, underground no the big what is that called crater the crater yeah, yeah. the first giant crater that they went into um, and the camera l- oh, right. went behind the dirt yeah. yeah but but the thing is with that is like I it didn't bug me because for me it felt like like it was a ride and I'm about like I, I constantly compared movies and rides the, the idea that movies. I'm What's that? Like Marvel movies? <laughs> like Marvel movies. You know, this wasn't cinema. The Mark. This 1917 uh, was not cinema. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I felt like it was a ride where I agreed to the terms and conditions before I went onto the ride. And like with this 1917, I'm glad I knew that the, the whole thing was going to be one shot because otherwise I think that would have gotten in the way for me. Um, and with that already known, I already yeah. knew they were going to hide cuts. I already knew that the camera was going to move in certain ways that – didn't need to in certain areas and right. because of that i didn't care um and there were t- and i saw every edit you know all, all three of us i'm pretty sure saw every edit and it didn't bother me at all and i and i i loved it you're a lucky soul 
Yeah. yeah. You're, uh, you really seem, especially for a, for a film snob, you, you really give films uh, a lot of leeway for that kind of thing. For visuals? Uh, well, I just mean that, uh, what was the last movie, This the same phenomenon? Oh, it was Star Wars. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's you, you had adjusted your expectations to a yeah. certain level. And that made you okay with things that were not okay. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, because it's different uh, depending on... I'm just acknowledging, I think, what we all do anyway, right? Everyone goes into a film with certain expectations, whether they want to or not. Yeah. Like you came out of Jurassic World 2 loving the movie until we talked about it and then you hated it. Like, yeah. And the same thing goes well, for... Well, dinosaurs. <laughs> same thing goes for Sorry to Bother You, you know? Also, all three of us loved it and then hated it. And it's just, it's just what we do. We, I'm just acknowledging it beforehand. That's all. I don't know what you mean exactly. About like, are you going gonna, in with are preconceptions? Are you going to not like 1917? No, no, no. I, I went in, I went in, not knowing what was what to expect, uh-huh. but mostly knowing that it was going to be a one shot gimmick. Yeah. And because of that, I could forgive anything that made it the one shot gimmick. Uh-huh. You know. So that's that's all. Yeah. Yeah, I can't relate with that because I knew all that too, and it bothered me a lot. Yeah. I was hoping that, I guess maybe. Cause I wasn't going in with hoping of a, like accepting it. Uh, that's not what I, it's not cause. conscious. It's just a thing that happens. Okay. Yeah. A- again, this is a part of a taste thing, you know, because I, I'm easy. I can f- easily forgive, uh, forgive quote, movies forgive. with strong visuals. Yeah. yeah. Movies with strong visuals. Cause, cause those things really, I really attach to those things. You attach to very visceral emotion. You know, so if a movie can like have zero continuity and you don't care because it makes you feel a certain way Mm. and you with human faces, it's the same thing. You don't know me. I know both of you. We, we have talked, uh, for over a lot of movies. I don't know. (laughs) So, so all three of us forgive in different ways, subconsciously forgive, not consciously. Right. right. So we're talking about how the ways in which you can and we can't. Now I can't. Yeah. What I will, but what bugs me is that w- when there's a scene that feels like it could have been told better. Differently, not better. Better. Better in your in your opinion. Do I need to say that? I do. Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> that. I assume everybody, <laughs> everybody anyone says about art is their opinion. Yeah, and, and, That's and the, my word, assumption. the word assumption. better yeah. is always subjective. Okay, okay. Right? Let's go, okay, go ahead. <laughs> better. Yeah. Not I think, objectively better. I think better. you can say better without clarifying that it's not objectively better. Especially because, in the context of because art it, and in, cinema. In, in Especially? Wherever yeah. does the word better mean objectively? Always, I would imagine. Never. It never does. No? No. Okay, the word so better is always relative to something else. Like this. What about it? Someone had told me that this tastes like shit. Uh-huh. And what they're trying to do is is change your opinion on the matter or at least inform your opinion. And based on what they've experienced. Yeah. So it's, it, it is obviously subjective coming right. from them, but they're trying to create a notion for you yeah. to follow. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're doing here is we're, we're doing the same thing with movies. We're, we're creating a notion for other people to follow. So it, it right. So when you say so that's exactly what better, I just said. I'm imagining better, but how I imagine better. Uh huh. So that my better is different from your better. So that's why I would say clarify when you say better. Won't do it. <laughs> I don't know that we're all trying to convince each other of to feel differently. I don't know. I don't know. I want you to feel differently. No, I mean, I, I kind, I kind of feel that. I kind of feel that. I find, kind of, kind of feel that we are a little bit, which is fine if we're not. But I kind of. Feel I'm like not. We are. I don't have any agenda. Well, I know you don't, but we do. <laughs> I have an agenda. Oh, no, we I have, have agenda. An agenda. <laughs> I have a gay agenda, actually. Really? Yeah. I'm I, have, a, I have a straight agenda also. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's balanced. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't have a bi agenda, though. That would be two agendas. <laughs> no, that'd be three agendas. <laughs> Gay, straight, and bi. No, but the bi agenda is two and one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a die agenda. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, you were saying about some of the shots. I'm just saying it could have been better. <laughs> Like no, no. When you say movie, better, <laughs> the whole movie could have been better if um, I was saying there were scenes that would have that I feel would have been better served if uh, they had chosen to cut around to multiple angles as opposed to the the follow gimmick. 
Yeah. 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 And and that's that's where it's like, okay, well now so we're just sticking with this because instead of right. because of the making it a better movie. How about you? I agree with that. And also even right. beyond what do you mean? What? No, no, con- sorry. I was going to say do you have an example sing? Oh, um basically every kid and cut. Okay. I felt like like I think part of what I had hoped for going into mm-hmm. was that um I would hope that the seamless transitions I thought I hope that they were going to do um like a new like push the edge of seamelessness and have it be completely seamless and yeah. or less noticeable or I less obvious. I kind of had that yeah. expectation as well, mostly because there had been a bunch of articles floating around Facebook. I haven't clicked on any of them, but they all say things like, how Sam Mendes pulled off his one-shot look, Ooh. you know? Yeah. yeah, that's interesting because – so I never I never heard any so of that So I saw stuff. it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be different. This is yeah. going to be interesting. But I was just like, well, this is, so, feels like a gimmick. So I only knew that it was supposed to be been shot from you guys. I, I haven't heard any articles about this. So I wonder if that colored my vision a little bit. The other thing that colored our vision, or at least mine, was yeah. that – the the marketing of the movie embraced the one shot thing as as something they were like like making it this movie's noteworthy because of that and i didn't like that either yeah that's too bad there was a poster where it said they have one shot yeah. to to save sixteen hundred lives. Yeah, you've, you've, and it had quotes around one shot. Yeah, and I'm like, so, that's so, the and at a point, thing. It, it's at a point <laughs> it, to me, it felt like it didn't even feel like it was one shot. It, I had that same thought too. There were there were moments where I'm like, wow, this just kind of feels like a normal movie. Yeah, yeah, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that good? That would be a good thing. It, it is a good thing, but. But why have so, it there if it doesn't make a difference? So I had zero media saturation at all on this movie. I had the, the trailer was the only thing that I saw, and it looked like just regular cuts throughout the whole trailer. Even they opened it with that yeah, they have dialogue. They, they have a reverse a quote shot. dialogue. Yeah, yeah, they had a reverse shot, and that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, I like the first. The opening was really cool. Uh, yeah, so, so going into it, the expectations that I had were that this was going to be one shot, and they're going to stick to it, obviously. They're not going to just... Did some of the shots feel like uh, Doom or Goldeneye to you? Yeah. This, it actually, it made me feel like it was uh, uh, Death Stranding that we just played because oh, yeah. the because the desert-looking kind of area, uh, and he's walking around all these hills and everything. I'm like, oh, this is a third-person uh, adventure game. <laughs> and um, I was going to say all the edits that happened, like – for, for me, when they happened, instead of instead of saying like, uh, oh, I wish they would have not done that, it was more like, wow, that's cool. So that's how they did that. <laughs> so like, I, I saw when he's when he was like going down the river and trying to keep afloat, um, they hid something. I don't know if, if it was a cut uh, with a digital rock. They oh. they added a rock into it. Yeah, um, and the I rock, thought all those rocks were digital. Some of them may have yeah. been more, but but I I did. I think I saw it attached to another rock somehow because it, it, the movement was different than the oh. actual rock. Um, and then there was one where they used a 3D model of him, either that or or a, or a compositing technique because probably compositing over blue screen. That would uh-huh. make more sense. Where he jumped into the – Oh, yeah. In, into somewhere. Yeah. Um, and so they matched the shot there. And that was kind of strange. And then they used uh, warp stabilize a couple times to to mask a shot properly uh so those those ones you know i I saw them but they didn't bring me out i I noticed them and i was like that's so that's how they did that so on another uh slightly unrelated graphics note effects note the rats say nah the rat the rats rats were pretty shit yeah (laughs) definitely iffy i I was wondering why they even they were okay until they got a little too close oh there I just one, realized the rat climbed around. I'm like, oh, that's too yeah. much. Yeah, I just realized that they needed the rats for that one shot, for the trip wire. For shot, the trip wire, yeah. Which made me jump like hell. That was so a good like, yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good moment. Uh, so, but, but that's um, why they needed them. No, I was going to mention the the scene at the end where he makes his 300 yard dash in open battlefield. Yeah. Did that look kind of weird to you? Like Mm-mm. like weird composity. So no, that looks going on. That looks super live to me. There was something odd about I, the, I the love crispness that. of him. 
Nothing? No. Okay. No, I was super connected to it. It to, to me, it felt – actually, that was the mo- – It was an awesome scene. It wasn't visceral to me, but it but it, it made me feel things like that. I was like – I was it was like the most uh, feelingful, emotional no doubt. shot yeah. for me. Yeah, that was like the – Honestly, that Forrest sequence – Forrest Gump moment. Yeah. felt fake to me. But not visually fake? The whole thing felt fake. Uh, like I – it felt like a rehearsed setup. Yeah, scene. like – yeah, you couldn't divorce yourself from the from the sub- was not, subjective reality. I was not immersed in the right. sequence at all. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. Actually, as the as the danger and spectacle got bigger, the movie got less interesting to me. I, I was in it the whole time, which was awesome. Uh, to me, the the best scene of the movie was when his friend died. Yeah. I yeah, that was awesome. That, that, that was great. That, that whole sequence yeah. from the plane coming in. Yeah. The friend wants to save the Nazi. Yeah. Yeah. And then the thing, the the very thing you thought uh, shouldn't happen to the guy who chose to do the right thing. Right. Yeah. 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 Ends up happening. Yeah. That was just a perfect cinema moment to me. Uh, The color was a little off for me at that point. Oh, and the sound was weird too. The sound was ridiculous. When they walked through that the flower. Area, the I was, area? I wasn't yeah. even yeah. sure if like th- that was. I a thought it was the problem. theater for a while. I think, it, like, there's something I think it was wrong the theater. I would hope it's the theater. Yeah, because that was bad. Like, like it just like bad. cotton balls were in the. Yeah. <laughs> they speakers. throw a low pass yeah. filter. Well, on I was starting to look at everyone. I was starting to look around and be like, "Is right, anyone else yeah. noticing how bad this?" I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. 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 I I I would look over to you guys. But why did it get better? It, yeah, it got it, better, and then it also and then got it dipped worse again. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What well, was so that was insane? Someone was either messing with the EQ or something happened because um, yeah, because that low pass was. I can't was imagine weird. that being part of the movie. It was There's no. I no was way. like, oh, maybe his ears are getting worse, and maybe he's gonna go deaf. <laughs> That's what I was thinking yeah. too at first. Yeah, it almost seemed like a, a thematic element. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then it yeah, but then it came back and then went away again. Yeah, yeah. it was bad. Okay, Lame. good. All right, we'll call that. We'll call it the theater. We'll call give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine they're very technically competent filmmakers. I would this. hope so, yeah. <laughs> Especially if they did all this shot matching. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I also didn't love the score that much. Yeah. Except for when, when it got big. The score. When it got Wasn't big, I liked Howard, it. Howard, what's his name? Howard Shore or something? I, d- I did like the oh, score. Oh, it was some Neiman, Newman guy. Uh, I liked. Uh, I didn't like it when it was underneath everything. Oh, it just like the constant as, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. I didn't yeah. like that. Yeah, because it did, I didn't feel like it added anything. I felt like it would have been. I would have liked it more if it was. If uh, it was without it. Without it, and then put a bigger emphasis on fully. To me, it felt like a jingling around. It felt like a Bond film in that respect to me, like like the action scenes were very actiony because of the music and the spectacle and the motion, like everything fit together for me and including the music. I also love the scene when he tells uh, Private Blake about his brother. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that was, was great. really, really well acted. That's yeah. interesting. Both of you guys are talking about the the parts that are, that this camera's not moving at all. Yeah. And that the characters are just <laughs> Where the characters got to do some human emotion. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Not, in, I'm not in the humans. Oh. Not in the whole the human thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, visuals were getting in the way of storytelling in yeah. this. See, humans were getting in the way of storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have been any humans. I really like the the part where he, the whole Benedict Cumberbatch moment. Yeah, I loved cool. that part. That yeah. was really good too. Yeah, I, just, I liked a lot of the movie. Like the the kind of writing that this has is so interesting because it's it feels so real. There's so so many parts of it that I'm just like that. That seems like that would actually happen. Like the dudes. Uh, saying no, you shouldn't go that way. He's like, no, we have water. He's like, don't do it. And they're like, well, we're gonna do it anyway. He's like, fine, go die. Like, yeah, that kind of stuff. I, like I that think is great. A you know, lot. I, love and I guess stuff. he was like the the chaplain or something. <laughs> what was that? He, he, the 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 religious figure for the military. He gives them their baptism oh. before they go. <laughs> oh, out. was he actually? Yeah, <laughs> <that> dude. <laughs> yeah, and the, he and runs into that one guy. Uh, who was crying the whole time? Yeah, like that was interesting. Yeah, uh, and and the moment when uh, Schofield is his name, Will, yep. uh, yeah, our main it's character, our relative. When he uh, when he realizes that the, they're in attack position, right? 
when when he talks to one of the guys and he goes to the down he the trench around that corner and, and everyone's ready, ready. Yeah, yeah i remember that hit me hard yeah. I'm like oh no yeah yeah, yeah. love that he is too late yeah all the gunshots sounded amazing great they gun did. sounds they, yeah. they always made me jump yeah. yeah i i really like seeing world war 1 done well on screen yeah because you hear a lot about it still remaining considered the 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 greatest of all wars yeah. great in the most terrible kind right. of way the, right. the bloodiest most yeah. brutal yeah and uh and and you know shell shock all that kind of stuff yeah trench warfare it's like the first time in human history where you have like planes and tanks planes and tanks and, right. and, and horses and stuff. right yeah right. dude that all dog fight was awesome yeah, yeah the dog fight was cool that yeah. was really cool yeah um I really wish I hadn't seen the trailer for this movie. Like the like all the set pieces that they had in the trailer, I was waiting for since it was since it was a one shot air, movie. The airplane bit, yeah. I really wish I hadn't seen. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that because that, that was, was obviously such a great part. It was yeah. obviously shot to so it would surprise you. Yeah, yeah, that's so. And, and same with the German who was silhouetted by the fire, who was shot at the at the guy who we thought was a friendly person at first. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like that was crazy. Well, and when he went up to the, um, went into that building, yeah, to find to the find the guy that he got that he got down, opens yeah. the door and he shoots. Yeah. That was in the trailer too. It was, yeah. yeah. Did did I miss something there? Like I don't. Did he get shot? He did. Yeah. I. They didn't. Oh really, no, no. I was left confused too. I was. He okay, fell see, back. I thought he got shot. Yeah. But it's he, never acknowledged. He must, no. I mean, because his wound is on the back of so his did, head. Maybe he just hit his head. From his fall, See, I'm from assuming. there on, it's a dream. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I thought he got shot because that's why he fell down. That's what I thought too. And I thought the wound was because of the shot. But no, you're right. It was it because was of the back, back of his yeah, head. Ooh, that's a bad plot hole. That, yeah. that, it did bug me too. Maybe I'm not like, a plot hole. Because his, yeah. unless he, we're meant to believe he just fe- stepped backwards right. because of the you know he was trying to get away right then the shot should but have it showed really it there was like two bullets there was it, two gunshots oh there were two well, there were yeah. two gunshots yeah this is like a han and guido thing yeah who shot yeah. first <laughs> that's um, interesting yeah and also when he does see the friendly guy well not friendly he sees somebody and then when he realizes that he's not friendly yeah he gets shot at yeah. directly but not hit well we see that a couple times People shooting things almost point blank and completely missing because the guns are super inaccurate. And that, yeah, that's I believe accurate that's yeah. to accurate. the time. Yeah, uh, that that it was really hard to shoot because it's hard people. to shoot straight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but when um, when he that lined just up, weird though, because they were like they were pretty, close. Pretty, pretty close. close. Yeah. I don't know. He was like he he, he was, looked like twenty feet or so. I mean, this is just a movie thing. Yeah, he was shot at a lot without yeah. ever getting hit. Right. Yeah. I, I always probably, suspend my disbelief. For yeah. A bit. I, I do too. Yeah. Usually, but usually it's not till after the movie where I go. I, I just felt like those little, two moments were very blatant. Like those two moments crossed the line for me. Not me. Like the I one that go. crossed the line for me was when the sniper in the window was shooting at him. Yeah. Sniper at the high ground with a direct view of him misses like 19 times. Yeah. And he scrambling is mani- manages to get the guy in the yeah. window who we can't even see. Yeah, I was like, well, wow, he's, man, he could, that's a lucky shot. You could see him. That's good. You saw, you saw him when he got shot. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't see him. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought was interesting was when when he did his deep breathing. Yeah. And then went to go shoot. Like he missed the first few times, which is great because that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> he's not like a war hero or anything, but he. He uh he does his deep breathing, goes to shoot, and completely misses. Like shoots like the the very yeah. bottom of the place, yeah. And then shoots way too high. Like that's that was great. I love that stuff. And then he and then he finally gets him. So I thought that was nice. Yeah. Also, when he goes unconscious, and it cuts to black. That's a cut. Right? See, see, we're no. talking about a cut. To me, that felt no, like a... No, no, they can't, they, Roger Deakin stood there for hours <laughs> well, with the camera running. <laughs> what I felt like was happening there was like, because we're seeing what... We're only privy to knowledge that Schofield had, right? It's her, his perspective. His completely. perspective. And so when he goes unconscious, we do too. So we don't we don't get to see yeah. anything. That's, that's, again, that I think we're... Because you're talking the about moment, the... Except for the moment we floated downstairs... Uh, out of the window. Yeah. Because then we saw things he didn't see. That yeah. was a weird moment when we came out of the window so and he left. tended to his wound and everything. So yeah. to me, that was strange. Th- that one and the one where it goes across the water. Yeah. 
were two moments where it, it knocked me out of the film because yeah. I was going along with the one shot, you know, steady cam following people deal. Like yeah. I, I was in it, but the, maybe it's just the camera operator in me when it they're he's following and all of a sudden they go floating across well, th- water i'm like yeah. wait, wait a minute well i think yeah i think you're thinking of it <laughs> as them being over the water right you're like i've gotten the camera that close to the water so now you're trying to figure out how they're doing it right right and i don't want to be thinking about that. right exactly point. yeah to me it, it's funny because to me it did the same thing but it was but see it wasn't talking i wasn't talking about the operator in my head i'm thinking about how beautiful of a shot it is because it's it's lined up so perfectly. I would have thought the same thing yeah. if we had first a shot of them walking down the hill and then we cut to a shot going across the water. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah. But because it was like... Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, whoa, what, what a ghost just took over. It's, yeah, it sounds like the one shot is, is really... It's really divorcing you from both of you guys from the, because the idea. Because it was a gimmick. You can call it a gimmick. It was just. A I vision. did. <laughs> yeah. I did call it. It's, it's just a vision. I don't you need know. your permission. Like I like. Yeah, it's just you know it's a, it's just a thing. But they're not you. The moral it. of this episode is don't don't uh, do gimmicks. I love Birdman. I love how they used it in Birdman. I love pretty much everything in Birdman. Uh, but yeah, there were some times, and and I think that was the first time that I saw a movie that had just a one shot gimmick. Rope. Alfred Hitchcock did it first. Yes, besides Rope. I haven't seen Rope. Go out either. But uh, when he, <laughs> when when they do the, uh, when they do the the one the one shot in Birdman, I was picking out all the edit points. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, well, well there it is. Oh there it is. Like like it was a problem. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it's just the artist. And see, for me, I felt like in Birdman, all the cuts are more obvious. Yeah. But the difference is from what I thought was um, in Birdman. It didn't feel like they were trying to hide the fact that they were hiding cuts. Whereas in 1917, it felt like they didn't want you to know that they were hiding cuts. I don't know. That sounds like, it sounds like media to me from, from what, from your perspective. Media? Yeah. It sounds like the idea of this movie being so perfect of one shot is getting in the way of seeing the one shot. Cause, cause to, I saw it, the one shot. It wasn't one shot. No, I mean, if, if none of the media part was in was in that, mm-hmm. you know, I wonder if that if that would help at all. If we if we stick with the Birdman comparison, yeah. a, a big difference there is that uh, Birdman's not going for hyper realistic. Yeah, right? it's not going true. for like that immersive. It, it's no, more, I would say he is going for hyper realistic, isn't he? No, Birdman is like almost in a dreamlike no, plane. The, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe, okay. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm defining saying, the term differently. I'm saying this film is is you're talking more, about super real, like yeah, very grounded, yeah, it's completely yeah, yeah. grounded in reality, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. It felt because this film felt like Bond to me, where it's not, it's just over real, it's not surreal, but it's it's re- it's movie. That's what it's what it felt like. It felt like movie. It felt it felt like I don't think that I it felt fake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that it yeah. felt pretty like and I Bond don't think feels it should have been fake. Well, I don't think it that's, was supposed yeah. to be a little. I, well, real, everything hyper else real, in the you know? movie tells me that it wants to be authentic. That, yeah, that, yeah. That's where the disconnect is. Is that everything else on the screen is suggesting that this is meant to be an authentic experience. right? So, so we could probably draw another comparison to another movie um, that does those things, but I can't think of the movie. Rope. Unfortunately, not rope. rope. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not with the one shot thing, but but like the they did it with film. <laughs> the idea that you're oh my gosh, yeah. The idea that you're introducing two things that you're like like this movie did the one shot gimmick where it's aesthetic aesthetically it's this way, but the movie content is actually very grounded, and you're kind of like mixing these two things uh, as opposed to one whole aesthetic, something like sorry to bother you where everything's crazy uh but there's been other movies that we've talked about where you guys have very much loved that kind of idea but i can't remember exactly what they were i'm I'm saying that the the problem that we're talking about i don't think is a problem i think it's just oh well we've had the conversation about movies that sort of blend like really grounded realism and surrealism well no not uh, 
not not like those. Okay. Because that's that's the intent. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like there's this this is done on purpose. Right. Where I feel like this one, it's on accident. Yeah. I, I don't know. It felt it felt good to me. Yeah. Fake. It's a fake ass movie. This it's movie's good. It's uh, good ass. Fake as hell. It's great ass movie. This movie's fake news. <laughs> Fake news, the movie. <laughs> you said that you love the movie, but I feel like you're sliding more towards this uh, not liking the movie. There's many movies that I enjoy that as soon as I start um, talking about analyzing it, it I, <laughs> I dislike it. I still stick with I liked the movie. It was a good, I can confidently it, hey, it was say a good time at the theater, all right? It's a good time at the theater. I liked it. I, I can confidently say I, can, I liked the movie. And I can definitely say that Sam Mendes has got serious chops. Good director. Yeah. For uh I wish it was better. Like there I want to call the movie a masterpiece because of all the cool things that it did, but I can't because of all the bad things that it yeah. did. It's not a masterpiece. Well, the, subjectively, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm talking about objectively. Subjectively. Objectively oh. masterpiece. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's an objective masterpiece for you? <laughs> <laughs> I think you re- did you realize you were making a joke? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Uh, that, that, that's that's the only, that's exactly my feeling, right? It's yeah. that yeah, I like I like the movie, but I'm just it's like having a splinter under my nail, right? Yeah. It, it's there there were things that just but, but we, we talked can't about get over that. What, what was the the last? Oh, we talked about Dark Knight. How how all of us just really really liked the Dark Knight, and then yeah. talking about other movies that are superhero movies, Marvel movies, how there's other people in the audience that are like like you said sobbing, yeah. right? Because something is crazy going on, and we're just totally divorced from the movie's reality because we're not buying into the to the reality that they set up. Yeah. So and yeah, I think with every movie, that's that's what it is, right? Every movie is is. Every movie is subjective. Thank you. Yes, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? They're saying that every movie has its own reality that you uh, suspend your disbelief for. Yeah. And it depends on who you are, how much you decide to give the movie, how much you decide to yeah. suspend your disbelief. No doubt. Sure. No doubt. In Blade Runner 2049, all three of us can suspend it completely. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what it does. And we're just like, yeah, well, we'll, well yeah, we'll that's it. pretty much like, yeah, that's a cool way to put it as a way like how good a movie is to me is yeah. how willing I am to suspend my disbelief yeah, and exactly buy into that. the reality of the world. Which is why in like uh, First Man, I could not do it. I yeah. couldn't, I would not suspend my disbelief because because of a certain kind of aesthetic that they used, just it pulled me out and yeah. it, it, it made me go, no, okay, listen, you're not yeah. going to get that much from me, you know? And that's, and that's what this one yeah. shot did, yep. did, did to yep. you guys. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, I I like I like keeping a, a very high bar for suspending disbelief. For right, it's like, but uh, it's but like a high I bar want, in yours. I want you to get me. I just yeah, want yeah, you yeah. To really get me. Yeah, and like like for me, like I wish I wish more did it. You know, I I do wish I could turn on my brain off in some of the movies that I went to. Like, uh, for example, what was the movie that you really liked? Don Quixote, the man who killed Don Quixote. Perfect movie. I really. <laughs> I really, really wish I could like that movie. You know, I, I really want to go in there and suspend all my disbelief. Well, but clearly, I that's a flaw in your character. Yeah, clearly, yeah. <laughs> clearly, that's an objective <laughs> wrong thing. Dude, that you I'm don't doing. understand. The Man Who Killed Dante Quixote is yeah. the only film in film history that is actually objective. Right. No, I know. Objectively, I, I know this. Yeah. yeah. I know this. So. Yeah. What was the other movie that you guys both really liked that was surreal that we saw? Oh, there was one recently, wasn't there? There's some movie where you're just you're just like, oh, yeah. Kenny and Taylor are gonna love. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Was it the Lighthouse? Oh, it might oh. have been that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. Lighthouse. Yeah, I felt. Lighthouse. I felt like the Lighthouse <laughs> that you guys feel about this movie. Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. we're like you're like I liked it, but I didn't love it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and there it's because I couldn't suspend and suspend it that yeah. far up. Yeah, and it was it was simply because some things you know, my brain disagrees with. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that wild? The Lighthouse was more real to me than this movie was. See, yeah, that's how I feel yeah. too. See, yeah. that's really cool that, <laughs> yeah. that we can understand it. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Giant Mermaid We've made vagina. a lot of progress this session. Guys. I, I like... I feel like we've broken some new ground yeah. here, guys. <laughs> I like analyzing this way. It's really, really interesting. Well, it's yeah. funny. Most most of the most interesting movies we see, yeah. 
lend to us, lead to us analyzing each other right. and how more we than watch analyzing movies. Because that's what movies are about, film. right? Whoa, dude, that's pretty deep. <laughs> movies are about people, about the viewers. Who would have thought? Oh, yeah, that, I love that. Who would have yeah, thought? But do you? Because <laughs> do you do you want to make a movie? Do you really knowing that it's about the viewer? And what about the word love? Is it's that not about you? Is is the word love? Does the word love? You're not mean something making different? a movie for yourself. <laughs> You're making it for an audience, assuming they're exclusive to each other. You shouldn't assume. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're no. not exclusive to each other. You're right. Yeah, of course that's right. Okay. Uh, 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 that's just because we've talked about movies for like like extensively yeah. every day for the past three years that we've been around well, each other, worked yeah, with each other. Yeah, it's been a good run. Well, yeah. no, it's, it's. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been so much that so we. So it's like, where do you go from there? It's that's like it exactly gets it. Really deep. Well, no, yeah. that's the thing is that the like, talkies is less about talking about the why, movie, and more about discussing well, how movie we movie like movies. Movie why critics no one watches the show. <laughs> <laughs> movie critics, like, but if you not, watch, <laughs> I'm sorry, do that. Go ahead, go interrupting you. Go ahead, hang on to that. Yes, I'm doing it. If somebody watches the talkies <laughs> from the first episode all the way through, they'll probably have a very interesting experience. <laughs> well, being uh, able all, to follow yeah, our all tastes of us, and all that. It's a pretty high demand for probably. It's we do. the <laughs> highest demand possible. We do but go I'm just into saying. <laughs> every episode's introspective. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one. Even uh, except Some for the bad movies. Some of them have just been insane. <laughs> the bad movies will usually keep it on the surface. Joker level. got crazy. Yeah. That was yeah. an intense one. Yeah. yeah. So I, I almost like was ready to walk away from the table. <laughs> like, like, this is stupid. <laughs> like that. I think that's what the thing about movie critics, you know, that's, that's what gets me about them is that every time a movie critic watches a movie and criticizes it, they're talking about, again, I'm going to use the word, uh-huh. like oh, a faux objective reality because what they say is, hey, this what if movie, the movie is bad. This movie's a five. <laughs> give it a pass. Right. Right, yeah. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. Rotten Tomatoes. A five, give it a pass. What what I'm saying is that he's given it a rating. Yeah. Or she, he or she is given it a rating. Uh, Based on what? Based on what they like? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, you know, that's, that's that's a bad thing. That's a... No, no. If, if it's, if it's because of what they like, if they're saying, if Roger Ebert said, I really liked the movie, I think you will too. Go ahead. Then that's fine. But if they what? go in saying this movie is a solid four out of four, you must see it. That's a. What's funny is that clearly they actually are saying yeah, yeah. what you want them to say. Yeah. That like that. They just if, don't use that language. Right. But if you boil down the essence of what they're saying, that yeah. that is it. Okay, but it's like it's a four out of five on the Roger Ebert scale. Th- but that's what we're yeah. saying about Rotten Tomatoes, right? Yeah, and Rotten Tomatoes well, says that. Rotten Tomatoes is a is a is a leap worse because yeah. It, it's a. It's an aggregate. Yeah, yeah. an aggregate. Yeah. It's like, like, critics. It's an aggregate of subjective critics only. Right. Critics only have value. Yeah. If you have a critic that you like yeah. or relate to, See, you yeah. trust their opinion. But I've, I've never had that. Well, no one has any. No, no, no. That's not yeah. even. A thing no, I anymore. mean, like, you would go to the newspaper like before yeah. and be like, "Oh, Roger, Roger gave this one a three point five. Let's right. go see it." Not because I like Roger. I've never heard of Roger Ebert. I just know that he's a critic and he's a very well-received movie critic. Therefore, this must be a good movie. Not because Roger Ebert likes the movie. It doesn't mean you go watch the movie and like the movie, though. No, but that's what most well, audiences look for. Not necessarily. They look for. They look for a movie critic to say something good about a movie and yeah. then they go to see it. Well, they should realize that. I'd say that now we're living it, in a right? time of like a very simplified version of what film critique once was yeah because it used to be that the newspaper would have three or four movie critics writing right and you would you would have your favorite you know and that's what was the point of siskel and ebert of the was that these these two were had like opposite opinions yeah you know they would that was like having like d and d and taylor (laughs) that would make a a cool uh critic right where you were bound to just thumbs up and thumbs down as your only (laughs) rating right and so people were either well, so that's, or Ebert that's what people. the two thumbs up yeah. thing meant, though, right. right? So two thumbs up means, okay, both of them like it, therefore Meaning, it must yeah. be good. Well, what it really meant was that it appeases two different sides of the brain. Okay, maybe know? okay, maybe then I'm just looking at this differently than, than you guys are about the movie critic thing. Because I've always imagined it as a, again, faux 
objective, not actually objective. But well, that that's what marketers want it to be. Object. That's right. what mark market the marketing wants it to be. That's that. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, always seeing sure. it from the yeah. certain amount of stars and yeah. You know, but that doesn't make it that way. I didn't say it yeah. did, though. I'm just saying that's the way I, I feel, feel like, like everyone else sees that's movies. A, okay. I think everyone sees movies that way. What way? Objectively? <laughs> We're using that word. What way? Uh, we, we just talked about it. The, I the, don't know what you mean. The five stars. Uh-huh. I go see it. Uh-huh. Five star is, is value. It's value neutral by itself. Yeah. Five star doesn't mean anything, but it does to audiences. Uh-huh. I don't think it does anymore. The yeah. Rotten Tomato score t- seems to. I felt like the Rotten Tomato score was the same thing because yeah. again, like IMDb does it too, and Metacritic and all yeah. those other ones. But I, I don't think, I don't think it really matters who does it according to your they just average. See a score somewhere yeah, a, according to your average moviegoer. I think yeah. your average moviegoer, like on Yelp, will go on Yelp to see an aggregate score. It doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. If one person gives it a rating, it's a rating. That's just supposed to be, hey, everybody, you should do this. It's People just are an lazy. announcement. They just want, they just don't want to think. I don't really see the problem. You don't see the problem with someone giving. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> with someone giving like a, like info objective rating for a movie? Not really. Because it doesn't mean you're going to like the movie. No, but that's what most people I think would say. You would hope it. But I mean, honestly, you, it, yeah. you should know that movies are subjective. I don't think people knew. I don't think people, people should know. know. They should, yeah. And they should no, learn. I, I would agree, yeah. But so I, I don't think go. they do. I don't know. I kind of love <laughs> that people have have some ownership and defensiveness about about movies. Yeah. Right. I think the so, I think as you get older, you I think do. if you really talk to people, they'll they will all acknowledge that this all comes down to opinions. Yeah. But for some reason, everyone has a little a little chip on their shoulder where they want to really. Because it makes for a more fun discussion. They want it to be real, right? Yeah. They want their opinion to yeah. to actually be true. Yes. Right, right, right. Exactly. Like actual truth. Yeah, yeah. Objective. And, and yeah. objective to that. To, <laughs> to me, say that. Like the world is not fun. Yeah. If people don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Like, like I love being able to. I love dropping on people that I hate the new Star Wars movie. Right. Because right. they get all, all heated up about it. We have a good time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How boring would it be? If what? If people if. were smart. <laughs> <laughs> if people were as enlightened as the three as of us, us, oh yeah, I would be very bored. <laughs> the, <laughs> the unintelligent so <laughs> shills out there are what? Oh my god! <laughs> they are what entertain me. I love it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is honest. I'm just being my honest. I'm I just, I just don't see the, my truth. I just don't see the problem. I don't know what you. I don't know what you're talking Who's about. Who's saying there's a problem? What's Dave the problem? Saying there was a problem. Hey, what's the problem? What's the problem, D? <laughs> with movie critics? Yeah. <laughs> with with talking faux objectively about a movie. I don't, I don't know. That's what I've been trying to argue with you guys, right? I don't know what the hell you're talking Whenever. about. Whenever. <laughs> <laughs> you should just say that instead of instead of asking me. I, you're so funny. I'm trying to I'm trying to understand you. That's all. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to ask you what you're talking about. Perhaps, just perhaps, what what we're talking about here is that the problem <laughs> is when um, when a critic or anyone suggests that uh, their opinion of a film is in fact objective, and the people full on believe that uh-huh. to be true. Okay. You're right. li- you're looking for someone else to make a decision for you. Uh-huh. Always. Yeah. When well, when yeah, when, when people look for ratings or, or, or to feed into the mythology that that uh, objective opinions can even be possible in art. Right. Right. Well, n- right, but, but I mean like so yeah. so like with advertising and everything, number one movie in America, blah blah blah. We're always trying to get people uh, as people who make movies, we're trying to get others excited about the movie. So we give them so much of this, uh, of, of, of a notion that this movie is to be respected and to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And someone as an audience member who looks at that kind of stuff, I go, wow, everyone seems to like it. I must like it. I'm going to go over there and watch it. And then, then have mean, my, then form my own opinion yeah. later. Sure. But yeah. But that's what draws the audiences See, in. See, but the problems you're pointing out to are yeah, yeah. don't actually have to do with film critics. 
It's the marriage between no. film critics yeah, yeah. and marketers. But but how film critics describe the movie isn't just in general terms. I don't. I don't I've and again, like yeah, you but said, but using general terms is very dull. No one wants to hear <laughs> general. No one wants to use general terms. No one wants to hear general terms. Yeah, they want to hear passion. The way I see it is, say there's somebody who believes a critic to have an objective opinion and they're like he know he must know what he's talking about because he's a film critic right, right. I, i'm right. trying to find a movie where's a film critic all right i found a film critic he right. must know what he's talking about exactly that. objectively yeah, yeah. all right so he does that so i'm gonna go see fucking uh the prodigy because it's uh number one horror movie five out of five this guy gave it a five out of five yeah yeah and he goes to see it he pays his ten dollars he sits down, watches the movie. Movie sucks. Demands his ten dollars back. He hates it. <laughs> Demands his ten dollars back. The manager doesn't give it to him. And That's messed up. Is, is this the kind of pizza that you're going to? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and then he learns that he has a different that this person that clearly there it's all subjective and I can't go off of this. So yeah. now I've learned my lesson. Well, I think I think you're giving too much credit. To, to a human being, yeah. to a per, that no, honestly, person. yeah, because I agree with that because people are dumb. No, no, I'm people saying that people stupid. are dumb as rocks. I'm saying that people. Don't, Most of our I don't, viewers are idiots. I don't like assuming that people are dumb. <laughs> I'm saying that people don't. You don't have to like it. It's, okay, how many? Yo, it's just, hold, I, hey, I don't. It's just a fact. I hold don't on, dude. assume people are dumb. Sorry. No, I'm saying that people don't. People don't look uh, further into movies like us three. You know, there's not. There's not a whole bunch of very big cinephiles. They're unenlightened. They're, <laughs> They're not dumb. They're just not enlightened. No, people who just don't really care that much about movies. And yeah. so when you go in and have a quote learning experience, I just said, it's not so much that they, they don't, they may have a learning experience, but they don't care about it later on. That's what I'm saying. You know, well, kind of like I how I do. And I don't care. If they don't care that much, then why does it matter? We're talking about movie criticism. We're not mm-hmm. talking about audience members. Oh, so, okay. So we're talking about movie criticism. Yeah. Well, we're talking about so, us three. So, so then. But yeah. I don't. I still don't see why it's a bad thing that there's faux objective. What I'm saying is that we, us three. Uh huh. <laughs> Keep going. I'm just playing. Just fidgeting. It's sure. Fine. It's all good. <laughs> it's fine. I'm talking about how us three talk about movies. Uh huh. I like. I like the way we talk about movies. I do I, too. And because you because you mentioned that we get to a very introspective part about yeah. talking about ourselves. Yeah. Rather than the movie, and I right. think that's better than talking about the movie. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. So you're. You're wishing other people could have this deeper experience, yeah. But they're all yeah. caught up on their faux objective. I, I don't really care what they're doing. I just, I just, I'm noting that there's a big difference. There's a big disparity yeah. there, you know. And I, th- and but, I think people should, yeah. I think I do think people should understand that going to a movie is a very, very personal experience. That's he's right. Actually, has a good point, Taylor. That's all true. He's right. Oh, that, you admit it. But he's not wrong, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're a big man. <laughs> Thank you. You're very good. Thank you. You I, convinced him. Well, that's just the objective truth is what I'm saying. <laughs> can't believe he won you over like that. Well, what I was saying where it doesn't matter is if somebody who isn't super into movies, yep. then they if they don't – not, not everybody wants to be that – for a lot of people, movies are just mindless entertainment. Just movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing really wrong with that either. Really? No. Really, not. though? No, there it's isn't. like it's are like you sure. Yeah, it's like how three of us Thank you. Yes. are are not into like. <laughs> are you gonna stick with that answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it's okay. like how the three of us are not into dressmaking. All right. Yeah. You know, I so, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I'm not into dressmaking, but uh, it's something that all three of us are not into. Then, is there anything that you're not into? Um, no, no, I'm nixing <laughs> nixing analogy. Oh, we I want to stick use, with the, f- yep, the film. No analogies. Critic. Analogies are what brings analogies understanding. Analogies are right out. Analogies are what bring understanding. I don't understand your analogies. <laughs> you don't have the capacity as <laughs> a thing. You shouldn't be here, Taylor. <laughs> it actually requires a pretty high IQ. You're just, you're really? just a guest speaker. My brain is yes. too small. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> For example, how do I know what orange vanilla Coke tastes like if that guy didn't tell me it would taste like shit? That's an analogy. Uh, mm-hmm. You already knew what it tastes like before he said that. No, nope. see, that I was, was the day I was going I was off of the ratings it. that they advertised for. for. No, 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 you had already I, this, had it. This was a five-star. You had star already drink. had it. Now you're a five-star. Revisionist drink. history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know why. Why? Why are we confused? What's going on? 
there's no question here. There's no problem. Okay. There's no conflict. So okay. I'm trying to figure out why. I'm trying to make a conflict. It's not working. I think that's what it is, honestly. <laughs> well, I've, it started out as, as, as conflict. We had something good going on there. Where'd we go wrong? <laughs> Kenny's so lost. <laughs> Kenny's like, I want to talk to. <laughs> I'm in this. Yeah, this is a fight between me and him. I, oh, you guys. Ooh. I, don't, I don't know why we're fighting. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Because I feel like I don't understand what you're talking about. We, Other, yeah. Beyond like. Beyond what we talked about? Yeah. That's what we were talking That's about. That's just it? Yeah. Okay. Just we're, just, we're just talking about what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. I feel like it started. Can you talk, you can you talk about introspection? Uh -huh. I said that I think that's better than movie critics because mm -hmm. we are uh, movie critics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where it went off the rails. Yeah. I feel like you were criticizing talking faux objectively about movies. I was. Yeah. Movie critics, I was. Yeah. See, I, and that's and where, I disagree that's with that. That's where I disagree. Yeah. Genuinely. That, that movie critics do that? No, I disagree that it's I bad. Dis yeah. I disagree that oh. a talking object phobe, a talking objectively about movies is a bad thing. See, that's interesting because that's that's, that's what I've been trying to talk about this whole time. Is that talking objectively about movies is bad? Yeah, I don't you, think you that don't is think bad. you think talking objectively about movies is fine. Yes, because it's impossible to. It's impossible to, therefore, it's fine. Yeah. Why? Why? Uh, why not? You know, because it's fun. It's more fun to talk about it objectively yeah. because it causes I under more discussion I understand and debate that like everything I feel about a movie is my opinion Interesting. but when when someone points that out to me and they're like that's just your opinion and I'm like yeah. okay well sh uh, should we just not talk about See, it see now that that's was stupid to me that's where I was yeah. during you Joker. have said that to yeah. me and it drives <laughs> me crazy no what you just said <laughs> that's I've, my point yeah. you've said that and it, that's no, what no, no, drives no. me crazy no 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 not not me saying that it's your opinion what you just said about you said okay why do, why are we even having the discussion then I've I've come to that conclusion. I know times that before. I know that's what I hate. You hate that, that conclusion. conclusion. That <laughs> <laughs> I hate that conclusion. But your brain goes there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying that's where we go. Yeah. If we just dis discount things because it's an opinion. Right. Exactly. If we okay, say it again. Like if I'm okay with us stating opinion as fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if we discount that as being non-valid right like a non-valid argument to have right then there is no argument that's okay so that was my argument about joker right yeah yeah and it, it, it made me furious <laughs> it makes for <laughs> i was livid discussion livid <laughs> it makes for lame discussion my point is we should say we should all feel comfortable saying this movie sucked for this reason yeah and you should feel comfortable saying i strongly disagree for this reason. Yeah. And as soon as someone walks in and says, you're both right because it's your opinions, then yeah. I go, then this show no longer matters. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's cool to, I think it's cool to analyze the reason why you feel that way, you know? Well, no, we, that's, and that's where, where, that's where we're going, that's yeah. where we're going to get to, yeah. right? That, that's, that's, that's where cool. we got to. Yeah. yeah. That is where we got to. Yeah. That, that's but where, that's, that's where it always ends up. I'm, but I'm not saying it's just your opinion and that's fine just to have an opinion. I'm saying that you felt that way because of this thing. I felt that way because of this thing. Sure, that makes it both okay, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm not just saying we're all just fine. Howdy downy. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, you've grown a lot since the Joker. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, I was never that person. I was never someone to say, we all have opinions, therefore it's great. So do you? No, no, no. It, so was, it was the opposite. It you, was, yeah. we all have opinions, therefore, therefore there's nothing why are to we talk doing about. this at all? Yeah, yeah. That is the thing that drove me insane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was trying to get to a... And that, those, okay, those ones. Actually, that goes yeah, back Joker. to our first episode of the talkies, yeah. see? It's we sat down and you're like, okay, and we're, we started saying our opinions. We're like, whoa, 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 those are your opinions. And we're like, yeah, they are. And you're like, well, we can't just talk about opinions. And like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I do remember saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because because I, I want to I wanna analyze a movie according to what happened on the screen. I, I guess I do want, I did want to do it objectively quite a bit. Yeah. Right. I wanted to go into a movie and try to find out because coming, f coming from film school, you know, as a film student, I like to, I, I found out how a movie became what it was. We never talked about opinions in film school, right? It wasn't that, how does this shot make you feel? It was this shot does this and this shot does this, right? That's what we learned. Yeah. And therefore, I applied that knowledge to filmmaking, and I started making films certain ways. 
uh, if I want to make a horror film, I know how to make it. Happy film, I know how to make it. So when we go into a different film, say Blood, Blade Runner 2049, our first talkies episode, uh, I talked about how the film made me feel during certain, certain things during certain times because it does these things that I believe films do, and it did it very well. Yeah. But then when we start disagreeing about those kinds of things, then it no longer talks about analytical stuff. Now we're talking about ourselves. And that's where I started getting, yeah, a little weird about it because I wanted to talk about the movie, not about ourselves. Yeah, but but now you've learned. I have, yeah. That you're always talking about yourself, right. whether you knew it or not. <laughs> right. No, yeah, it's yeah. been a learning experience. It definitely has, yeah. 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 And I think that's really interesting, yeah. I think it's funny because film school is faux objective. It is. That, and that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's, why, think, yeah. that's why school ruins good minds <laughs> well it's, i think that's really it's interesting the death that's a, of creativity it is interesting yeah that's i think that's really cool to have come from that perspective see now i feel good because we reached the conclusion this this understanding of each other that I wait, was wait did you hear what i said find. did you understand that yeah you did i understood i understood i know what <laughs> we're talking about i know what we're talking about <laughs> oh sorry do you understand do you uh i actually disagree you did not understand <laughs> him right because here's what he actually meant. <laughs> Let me explain what D was okay, saying. Yeah, maybe there. It, maybe it's probably impossible for me to understand what D <laughs> right, talks yeah, about because anyway. You, so yeah, I must be mistaken. You have a very small brain, so, so D, yeah. what Kenny, what did he say? Uh, Translate. <laughs> thank you. Please dumb it down for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D D said that uh, movies are Suck. objective. They're, they're bad. Movies objective. <laughs> <laughs> not subjective. Not subjective. Not subjective. D wrong. D wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're back to the hatred. Thank you. Thank We've been you. watching the talkies. Pizza. What kind of pizza is 1970s? Wait, what movie did we see today? Ad Astra? Ad Astra. No, no, no. First Man. No, no, First Joker. Man. Did the movie even matter? In the end, did the movie even matter? <laughs> Does it ever? <laughs> Wait, why are we oh, into okay. movies? Before we got into the, uh, there was one more chat. comment that I had. Uh, uh, the coloring yeah. on the dude's face uh -huh. is, is what started that, that whole oh, train of thought. When? Uh, when he was dying. When was Mr. Oh, when he went gray? Blake. Yeah. Blakey. Yeah, he went so, very gray. So he, he started bleeding out, and then his face turned really desaturated really quickly. And I was like, wow, that's... Well, he had a lot of blood That was quick. Out. Yeah. And so I was like, so I just accepted it. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's fine. But then we moved in more. The, the camera literally got closer, and his face became more saturated. Did it? Mm-hmm. And I tried to, I tried that's, to like that's, infer what they were doing. I'm like, oh, flaw. maybe, uh, maybe it's because I don't know. It returns back for some reason. He's gonna come back to life. I thought they were gonna do something like that. Yeah. <gasps> There's one more. Yeah. Thing. It was very strange. <laughs> very strange. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I liked his death. <laughs> I liked his death. I like a it lot. when people die. Yeah. I, I love. He's like, he knows he's hurt and he's freaking out, and he's like. And then that moment where he realizes it's bad. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no. I thought that was crazy that he died from one stab wound. Well, if, if you hit, hit, yeah, hit the right, right thing, hit the right, right thing. spot, you're yeah. going to just bleed. Well, I guess it's it's funny because that's, that's the ground in reality part that you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. if that happened in reality, that's probably what would happen. Yeah. But, like, I'm used to movies where people just get stabbed and, and they die. walk it off. Yeah, yeah. they just, like, tie something to it and they're like, yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what was kind of cool about that scene was um, – I felt like he was the main character too. Yeah, I did that too, was yeah. awesome because we followed him. Yeah. But with what you just said, how like in most movies people get stabbed and they walk it off, it's no problem. Yeah, he gets stabbed here. He and couldn't stand up. You're thinking like like I was thinking, um, oh, is he gonna make it or is he gonna die? And I wasn't sure. Right. And and they kept going longer. I was like, oh, he's probably gonna make it. He'll probably get up. They'll carry him to an infirmary. Right. And then it keeps going, and then he dies. And that's something that like. It it's like, a stake, you mean? Yeah, that's like it's there's a stake, stake there yeah. and a consequence yeah. of his death. Yeah, yeah. I love, and there is a I consequence, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's like something that a lot of movies don't do. See, that, oh, that was oh, also, that was something. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll wait. Can you? Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure if I remember now. Okay. <laughs> it was a really cool thought, though. You go ahead. It'll come back yeah, in yeah. the middle of my comment. Go, go ahead. What I oh, was, that's what it was. No. Go ahead. <laughs> what I was gonna say is that um, that moment, the death of. Uh, dude, Blake, uh, was one of the moments where I thought the, 
the one shot technique was very very cool because when you're when you're married to the one shot technique it means you can only see so much at a time and so we're not seeing what's happening off camera. We don't see the Nazi pull out a knife and double, you know, right. stab him, right? right? That's not something we get to experience. Yeah. And if we were that character, he's looking at his helmet, you know, and he, he looks up and he goes, oh, no, right? And we got to have that moment yeah. with him. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. I yeah. really liked having that limited perspective throughout the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I really enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I, th I thought that was also good. I liked that. Um, that's what I liked in Dunkirk so much. Yeah. This movie made me want to go back and watch Dunkirk. See, I actually yeah. thought they should have done that more, like like uh, narrow in the perspective more. Yeah. Because I felt like there were times where they were like, okay, we have to establish this new location, so we're going to broaden again and get big. And then we kept getting small and big and small and big. Uh, I didn't feel and that way. I, uh, it's funny. It's one of the things that tropey, dumb horror movies do really well. Yeah are those long shots right. where you're walking through the hallways of a house yeah. and they're able to scare you by what you can't see. That's an interesting comparison. So I, I've I've noticed that horror movies do that kind of thing. I've probably said this before in talkies, but like horror movies are interesting because they they almost literally break the fourth wall all the time, every single time. And what, it, what they're doing is they're trying to scare the audience, not scare yeah. the character. Right. 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 It's by, been, by, by leaving this negative space up here right. that makes the audience go, there's something there, something right. there, and then it comes up here. Yeah. That's not a... It's They're not telling a story. It does nothing to the character. Yeah. But what's cool <laughs> the is that The character's people, not aware of the negative space. Yeah. <laughs> but people like horror movies so much because they have a visceral feeling, right? Yeah. They feel an emotion that they're trying to go to a movie to feel yeah. but they don't do that in other movies and it's really strange that they don't and they they do when it's a good they movie. do it to, in comedies a lot they do it in comedies yeah. right but like like if it's a really good movie you should feel what i mean what the director wants you to feel but if you're following like one person's perspective you should feel what they feel all the time right you know and that's what I thought, like, Hereditary did amazingly well. Hereditary. When <laughs> when, uh, when when just the drama happened, you know, like, I wanted to hide from his mom, you know? like it, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. That stuff is awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hereditary is incredible. What a great movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also, Hereditary uh, does these things that other horror movies like to try to do yeah but actually succeeds at them but actually does it yeah like with uh being afraid of darker segments of the screen or darker scenes like with uh his mom hiding up in the corner in the corner you can, you can see her yeah and like there's other movies that other horror movies that have done similar things but in hereditary it's actually scary <laughs> yeah this I've... ends hereditary hour <laughs> every movie Every every movie has hereditary and Star Wars hour. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I was gonna say more about horror movies. <laughs> we, it's we can not in, really relevant. Like, in 1917, uh, yeah. the there was I, I can't remember exactly what you said that made me go oh yeah, but it was basically that that oh it was the stakes yeah. right there were actual stakes here, and so many times I feel like movies do what you were talking about where they just have. This the thing happened because that's what you're supposed to do, right? A person's dying, but they're not really. It's a fake out. It's a fake, fake out, right? Death fake out. Like a fake stakes is what it yeah. is. No emotional stakes. Yeah. And that was the thing that really, really didn't. Uh, that really pulls me out of, of most movies. And and me too. Yeah, and I feel like that's that's a thing that all three of us like yeah. really latch onto. You know, is actual emotional stakes. Yeah. True consequences to actions that happen. That's why Breaking Bad is like one of the best shows ever. Is right. Because everything has consequences. Everything has. A that was almost the yeah. theme of yeah. Breaking Bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As a whole, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like everything comes at a price. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's what makes a compel uh, a, an element of what makes a compelling story is yeah. actual stakes. Yeah. Actual consequences for things. Which is why Star Wars was so weird. Yeah, yeah and why all the just, Marvel movies just are lacked kind of boring. Any depth, and, right? And why Marvel Marvel you know, movies are just boring. There's just, yeah. there's yeah. no depth there yeah. when 
virtually everything you see happen on screen gets undone. Yeah. yeah it, you yeah. know, it's the one of the worst kinds of storytelling. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 Well, everything's <laughs> fake. <laughs> no, nothing's happening here. It like, yeah. it like it delegitimizes your audience experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, that the emotions you just had were irrelevant. They yeah. didn't matter. Funny. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start Game of Thrones hour real quick. Please. All right, might as well. It's been a while. I know. We've, I know. we've covered everything else. <laughs> might as well. <laughs> Just might as well. Uh, the whole last season of Game of Thrones. Oh, you're going to go there? Sorry, okay. Maybe the <laughs> never, seventh season? Never mind. No, eighth season. <laughs> Wait, there, you know the whole battle, the whole giant, giant battle scene? The dark, the two dark battle scene? Yeah, yeah, Battle of Winterfell. Yes. I was at the edge of my seat during the whole time, really, really hoping none of these characters die. And then you were disappointed that none of them died. Then I was disappointed. Yeah, same here. It was really, that's a really interesting experience. Yeah, I'm like, I, oh my gosh, they're yeah. going to die. They're going to die. Who's going to yeah. die? Like, I went into that expecting that like a third of the major characters like were the, going yeah, to More die. for me, yeah. yeah. And I was like nail biting and they then were none. Un- <laughs> it was so, it was so, it was yeah, BS. so weird. So <laughs> it was but, such BS. But so going back to 1917, that's yeah. what 1917 does so well is set the proper expectations yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I even believed he could fail. I yeah, really so did. did I. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't familiar with the story, and he did halfway fail. You know, well, yeah, the, the second he wave was, was starting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I I wouldn't have been all that surprised if Mister Comberbotch had just said, had just said no, no yeah, we're still yeah. doing it. Yeah. When, and then he just witnessed this massacre, <laughs> right? And I just be like, dang, when, yeah, yeah. When uh, when they it started the journey, ending, actually, <laughs> when they started their journey, that was actually one of the questions that popped in my head was so he's either going to do it or not i wonder what what the nuance is going to be and it was actually right. really nuanced this, this right <laughs> yeah it wasn't black and white. really feels a lot like lord of the rings to me that's funny like <laughs> like the like the just barely you know, having enough strength to make it to the end succeed in his mission and then uh lord know, of the I, rings yeah, i'm just like this did is, that too yeah i totally forgot that i did believe you know that the ring was in danger several times you know, I was like, there was times I'm like, oh, he's going to make it. And I'm like, oh, he's not going to make it. Yeah. There were several of those times. Yeah. I believed he could fail. Yeah. A lot, a lot of crap went bad on the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I think a lot of writers might might get a little too caught up in uh, their <coughs> protagonists. Yeah. As being, well, they love them yeah, too much is what I feel like. Yeah. too in love with them and, and fail to set up a – fail to un- – what you were talking about, basically just underestimate that – Believing that it's possible for your character to fail adds so much more to the stakes, and if they yeah. do ultimately succeed, makes the success even better. Right. I think, and, that's and if they're why, flawed characters too. Yeah. I think that's why Harry Potter is such a iconic piece of youth level literature mm-hmm. yeah. that is elevated to like just sort of respected universally yeah. because of that very thing from Goblet of Fire on. Right, mm-hmm. Cedric Diggory. Right, uh, and then uh, Dumbledore. Yeah. and that one kid. Then the, the Weasley yeah. dude. Die, you know, and yeah. it's just, uh, and and in in the end, Harry has to die. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, he, he manages to come back, uh, but <laughs> he, weak. <laughs> Commit. <laughs> um, the stakes are real. Yeah, right? yeah. stakes are real. Yeah, really like that. Pizza time. It's pizza time. One of the cool things I'm about starving. our starving. One of the thank you. <laughs> one of the cool things about our opinions about our movies is that it gives us a way to judge them with nuance. With yeah, nuance. exactly. With intense nuance. Yeah. There, there is no rating system out there that respects the amount of nuance that is in pizza. your reaction yeah. to a movie. So Individual, pizza. individualized too. Individualized. Yeah. Not only because is because pizza and food itself is subjective too. So you got to think, is this motor oil pizza? I might Hold like on. motor oil You might pizza. like motor oil. Yeah. <laughs> so our, and so, so actually, when we say pizza score, what we actually mean is how many slices of pizza out of a possible 10? There you go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and 10 is the best. 10 being the best. Uh, 7 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nuanced. <laughs> All right, who's up? D should go first. D go first. What oh, geez. Pizza uh, is 1917. Okay. Okay. Oof. Oof. I got mine. Yeah? Yep. I could go. I'm going to go. All right, go. I'm going to go. Okay. So BJ's has this awesome pizza. 
called the Buffalo Chicken Pizza Deep Dish. BJ. Okay. BJ's. It's really, really good because it has a distinct, uh, different flavor, mm. you know? Mm. But not just that, but like the crust in this deep dish, mm. it's like it's like crisp on the outside, mm. and nice, nice and fluffy. Mm. It's got that like inside. fried dough yeah. Oh, vibe. Damn, hell yeah. Damn. And it's this kind of it's this kind of bite that you just you sink your teeth into. Mm. It's just mm. Mm. that's what this movie was. Love that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's a very positive uh, review. Yeah. Glad you nice. enjoyed. I'm glad you enjoyed the movie that much. I did Me too. I did. Oh, but uh, but there were some burnt bits in it. Oh, just a couple. Yeah. But Which right. you don't mind. You yeah. don't mind. Because yeah. you kind of expect it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you kind of even like the little bitter. But you might not expect it. You know, if you're going in, everyone's you. talking about how there's no burnt pieces and you, you, yeah. bring it, and it's the you burnt. see it, then you're pissed. Yeah. Then you're like, pissed. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's just another pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Okay, mine. Yes. <laughs> All right. So someone gives you a pizza that is absolutely gorgeous, smells delicious. And taste delicious. All right. With the gimmick that <laughs> you have to start eating and not stop until it's done. A one shot pizza. Mm-hmm. And you see, it's a really good pizza. Like, I can't deny that. But the fact that I have to eat it that way does lessen my overall experience <laughs> Slow of the annoying. pizza. Yeah. Unless you went in with that, that expectation. If I went in knowing that I would have to eat a whole pizza at <laughs> one go, maybe. It was just sprung on you. You're like, yeah. you have to eat this in one go. Yeah, like, well, that kind of gets in the way of me. And I'd kind of like to just stop and chew it. And they're like, no, nah. you have to. And I'm like, well, it still tastes good, but. That's amazing. That's my review. That's great. Yeah. Uh, mine's simple. A pepperoni pizza. It's pepperoni pizza. No, no, no. Not just any pepperoni pizza. Mm. Um, this is Whole Foods. Pepperoni <laughs> pizza. Okay. But it's not immediately fresh. Like, oh, yeah. But it's not like mm. it's not like it's been out the whole day. Not the whole day. Just like just, an hour. Yeah, like a, like maybe two hours it's been out. So it's kind of lukewarm. Two hour old. It's sit a little bit. <laughs> two hour old Under pepperoni lamp. Whole Foods pizza <laughs> with parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes put onto it that's 1917 all right, all right. well all right. and that, that's that's a pretty classic uh, it's good. taylor i like it taylor yeah. eats that taylor i, eats I that. like that yeah. Yeah. yeah it's good yeah yeah i enjoy it all right yeah. and it's not like mind-blowing but you know just to, to say <laughs> it's to say mind-blowing pizza. Like, we all ate pizzas that we enjoyed we did yeah we did yeah, yeah. so wow <laughs> <laughs> That, that's one of that's one of the highest praises we've ever given a movie, to be honest. It is. You're welcome, Sammy. Yeah, we never actually said how great this movie was. This movie was very great. We all said we loved it at the beginning. I liked it. He didn't love <laughs> it. I didn't love it. I liked it. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye. Uh, are we done? You sure? Maybe we not. We could talk a little We could talk some more. Yeah. <laughs> we have, what's, what's another movie we haven't talked about yet? Um, Alien. Mm. Oh, M. Night Shyamalan. Where would that lead Let's us? Let's talk about M. Night Shyamalan. So, anyway, so M. Night 